<clears throat> so yeah, the Hall of Fame is all about uh, emphasizing players. So Chris Paga, while he's great at Dragon's Lair and he's great at Sinistar, is on this list because he tries the stuff. He tries the games. You'll see him on an odd Tuesday night fights. You'll see him at the game Arama. You'll see him playing Dragon's Lair. You'll see him trying to not get too annoyed by Jason Palmer, another Hall of Famer. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Hello? You there? Can you hear me? I bet he's deafened by, uh, by Fred Boat. songs we should beat him down with too. It's all up to Jimmy, I suppose. Hey Chris, can you hear me? Now I can. Gotcha. Were you not able to figure out how to turn down Fred Boat? No, I wasn't. Okay. We'll just kick Fred Boat out for now. Um so I was introducing uh, your uh, you're in the Hall of Fame because of not just your Dragon's Lair prowess, which you are well known for, and uh, Sinistar, and I guess are you tops on crossbow now? Uh, I'm playing it then, but it, obviously it was a lot shorter back when I was a kid, <laughs> so it's a lot harder playing it when you have to practically stoop down on your knees. Man, I feel that, especially those Nintendo cabinets. Like Donkey Kong, I have to go like way down into power stance to look inside a Nintendo cabinet. Yeah, it makes it a little harder to aim, but it uh, went a lot better than I did. Mm -hmm. well, eventually, I'll beat it. Just a matter. Of All right, you're you're breaking up here and there, but we're gonna try and fight through. Um, you, uh, how long have you been coming to free play? Because I cannot remember a time at free play without you there. And I've definitely been uh, there since day one. Showed up. Oh, I don't know. Probably a month or two after I actually almost forgot about it. And then it's like, Oh, wait a minute. Haven't, haven't missed a weekend. Well, tried not to miss a weekend ever since. I wonder if so I missed it, a weekend. I'm I'm sure I have, it? but like, I, I I generally go every day. So like today today's gonna be a rare exception. I don't think I will visit a free play all day today, unless the live matching game wrap, wraps up in a timely manner, which it never does. And then I I might have time to sneak away to to free play Richardson maybe. Uh, it usually to, with me it depends on uh, how aggravated I am at the end of the workday and how much work I have next. Day. How so, was work I today? don't know. Oh, humid. Humid. Very. Does that make it aggravating or? Well, there's no AC in the shop, so and the big fans they do is just hot air off, and with seventy five percent humidity. Yeah, it's, you know, a nice, hot, sticky day. Mm -hmm. um, you are, I I guess, if, if you don't mind re revealing your profession, do you? Uh, automotive technician. Yeah. You're, you're, you've got to be the most talented automotive technician I've ever met because those pictures you posted of stripping down a car to, like, the nuts and bolts, literally, and then building it back and having four screws missing... I don't even understand how it's possible. Like repetition, it's just like like video games. You do enough of it, it just becomes second nature. I guess, but either way, that means you're you're very, very, very highly talented at it. Like uh, like your Dragon Slayer level talented at yeah, it. That's well, it's it's memory. Mm -hmm. As I said, you do enough of it, where it all goes. It'll find its way back. 
All right, so you started coming to free play the first month, is that right? And then you, you've been every weekend since, more or less? Yeah, on and off. You know, I usually try to get there at least once or twice a week. So. Mm-hmm. I, I think of you uh, on Wednesdays. Is that is that still your day? Uh, It hasn't been lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, Most of the time it's been, I don't know, Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays, sometimes. Sad. Um, what's uh? Let's see. What what got you? What got you going to free play? Did you? What what made you notice it? How'd you figure it out? How'd you hear about it? Oh, just I had already knew there were some barcades around. Looking at their websites, they kind of just a little lackluster. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm trying to remember. I think I actually. I think I was actually browsing YouTube and. I there may have been a news video. I can't remember exactly where I saw. I think there was a free. Oh, you gotta find that. Yeah, there's been a few walkthrough oh. videos throughout. Um, wherever you well, get, are you on your cell phone, Mike? Uh, sorry, Chris. I've been talking to Mike all day. No, no, I'm on a headset. It probably is a little light. You're you're breaking up qu- quite a bit. So if you can. Uh... I'm not sure if you need to get closer to. If you're wired, you should be fine. Your your internet connection may be unstable, and that's if that's the case. But uh, whatever you can do to, to stabilize it. Um, you're 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 about eighty five percent to drop into like forty percent. So, um, let's see. the The question was, where did you? Where'd you discover it? You said you a YouTube walkthrough. I know there were a lot of walkthroughs in those early days. Uh, I want to say Palmer posted a walkthrough. I know he's done walkthroughs of other arcades. Well, no, this was a new state, a uh, television. St- oh, a TV spot. Yeah. Yeah, they just did like a small five-minute uh, bit on free play. Um, this is like when they first opened up. Uh-huh. Yeah. I gotta find that place and then just. Uh, yeah, do you live in the area? You have to, right? I live about ten minutes. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so not quite walking distance like I do, but pretty pretty close. Yeah, I mean it. Uh, I neighborhood I have to drive through. I I wouldn't think about, it, but. Uh, it's like I said, ten minutes and by vehicle. It's not too bad. Um, if anyone has questions for Chris, let me know in the chat. I'll be happy to relay them along. Um, well, and we're, like I said, we're gonna keep fighting through the audio issues because this is Chris Baga. We can actually have him on. Um, you've been uh, let's see, you've been coming since the beginning. How's that? Uh, that's is that any really, better? Yes, that sounded nice. Yeah. Um. What all? What all do I? Need? There's so much to ask you about. Like, I I don't even remember when we first met, Chris. Do you happen to have any recollection? I just feel like I've known you forever. Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember either. Cause you're, cause we are like that. It's not that we're just that old, which which we are, but like, it's the the fact that like, I don't remember coming to a free plate before Chris Paga was coming there. That's that's sort of the thing. Uh, similar to, to Palmer, where I have no idea when and where I met Jason Palmer. Uh, you just sort uh, of always been one of us. Yeah, I think I've I've ended up. Uh, I actually ran into Palmer probably second or third visit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was a is it, it was a week night. You were, you were laughing at how much he was hitting on Ashley. Uh, that's every day, isn't it? Yeah, that <laughs> With was. Somebody. It was somebody. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not supposed to ask about the Palmer hitting on people. I'm supposed to ask you from Palmer about your guitar collection. So tell us about your guitar collection. There's a lot of them. <laughs> like north of ten. Uh, let's see. Yeah, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20. 20? Jeez. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I'm, there's still about five 
that are in pieces. I haven't gotten around to putting them back together. Is that like a hobby, restoring guitars? Uh, I've been playing guitar longer than I've been playing guitars. Uh-huh. That's over years. So, so is that a hobby Still. to, like, restore them? Uh... After a while playing, instead of spending a whole lot of money, uh, having somebody set them up and I was never happy did it, I just find, managed to find a book and through trial and error, I just started fixing them myself. I've, I've built a bunch of kit guitars. That's what a number of these are. Mm -hmm. uh, I have taken a building class, but it really can't. A lot of woodworking inside an apartment, so that will have to wait wherever, whenever I get access to a garage. But no, I mean it's just like I said, I tinker around with them all the time. But I mean, mostly it's like I said, I used to play bands all the time. Just kind of gotten tired of that, but I stay at home. Uh huh. Um... Just when you think, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was I was gonna ask if you're in any bands right now. Uh, no. I'm taking a bit of a hiatus. That last band I was in, uh, just uh, I was more of a fill-in, mm -hmm. and that, and honestly, I did. Money was there, what they were expecting, and the ice. Cam the straw that broke the camel's back was a, a gig out in the middle of Crandall. I mean, really out in the middle of nowhere. And it's probably not the right thing to do, but kind of burnt me a couple of times. I got about half, three quarters of the way there and really lost down this dirt road. And it's like, I'm only, I'm playing four hours and maybe get dollars for this and I was, uh that's enough of that and I just turned around mm -hmm. went back home loaded my gear up and went free play <laughs> awesome well glad to have you <laughs> I mean if it's not fun to do what you do then I, I can't imagine it being worth it I I, I don't know I, I I hope you have fun whenever you play guitar like that's that's me in the in in the games right like it's my job sure it's fun virtually every time I play a game like even the worst oh, yeah. game, even Doctor Mario. I'm looking at you, Doctor Mario. Even the worst game, you're. I still, I still have fun. You're a tougher man than I am. Uh, you can't take Doctor Mario. I understand. Uh, <laughs> God, that game's bad. Glad someone can agree with me. Um, what's your uh? Let's see. Do you have any music out there? Since we're we're talking about the guitars, I don't want to shortchange you. Any, do, should we plug uh, any kind of a uh, Chris Paga guitar page? Oh, there isn't out there. Uh, about the only thing, and I don't even know if it's even still up. There used to be. I had something posted on my MySpace page years ago. Oof. We might and have I don't even know finding I, the MySpace page. Yeah. I don't even think the Wayback Machine the back. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's a... I'm a victim of a few of those where you, you can barely find it or not find it at all due to the Wayback Machine. It's just us being ancient, I suppose. So, um, I'm, now I'm curious. <laughs> well, I'm curious too because I've known you play guitar. Palmer, have you ever heard Chris play guitar? Because I have not. Like I've never heard you play guitar, even though I know you've played guitar, and I've I've been curious for a long time. Of course, we had the free play band for a little while that I never heard. Um, There's actually some videos on my uh, on my Facebook page. I was just oh, I started posting fresh songs. Uh, Neil Peart passed. Neil Peart passed away. There's uh -huh. there's there's two or so videos up there. I mean, nothing fancy. I'm just playing along with the song. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, uh, hmm. I wonder if I can play them. I doubt I can play them in the background. Even if, even if I tried. Yeah, Actually, yeah I, I, I couldn't play them because of the uh, DMCA, of course. That's that's what I. I don't know. They're on Facebook, so I don't know. I mean, I'm. 
Uh, Facebook to, Facebook rolls by different rules. It's uh, yeah, yeah. So if we went live on Facebook, I suppose it would work. But we're on Twitch, where we're beholden to the Twitch gods. Um, let's see. When did you uh, have you been playing arcade games all your life? Oh yeah. This is this is redundant in time on. because I know your backstory because I've known you for so long. Oh yeah. Uh, getting into town, like I said, I lived south and south of Shreveport. Mm-hmm. So getting to getting to an arcade was, if I was lucky, of course, you know, if the parents were willing to drop you off there and then lucky to get five bucks. <laughs> right. Oh, five so, bucks was so. Man, that was just. That was a well, windfall. I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> for for me back in the day, like I couldn't. I couldn't get five bucks most times, and I wanted five bucks because I wanted the five extra tokens at just for fun. Wow, just for fun, Bozier. Yes, Pierre Bozier Mall. Yeah, I rarely did I get to go to Bozier. Most of the time, it was Land of Oz and South Park. I forgot we're both tree. Yes. Yes, both of us are spent time growing up in the same area, Shreveport, Bossier, oh, I, Northern Louisiana. I was, I was born and raised. So you were born and raised exactly. there. Yeah, in Shreveport. Uh, I don't. It's not even Doctor's Hospital anymore. It's been re- times. And- yes, my brother was named was uh was born at whatever Doctor's Hospital is currently named. Um, but yeah, been to been to South Park Mall or whatever church it is now, uh, many, many times. <laughs> yes. Uh, so. Yeah, my first memories of arcades, actually, it's somewhere, the first arcade I, c- I have any recollection of is in the <laughs> Keithville area. Do you know Keithville? Oh, yeah, that's, like I said, it had to drive through that to get home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were actually in Gloucester, Soto Parish. Yeah, it's, south of stone yeah i i i did that until uh, 91 and then i uh moved to to the denton area and then then my then i go back and forth between there and i spent some time in the in the mid 90s back in uh in shreveport did a lot of mall st vincent's and you know every mall i don't i don't recall any arcade outside of a mall other than that that kifa one when i was like five and it, it shut down shortly after that oh there is one exception there was a uh, crystal palace uh the 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 uh, roller skating rink right What's that the roller skating rink crystal palace uh crystal well it oh, if it was maybe thinking of hot wheels uh but Hot Wheels as well. I think there was a Crystal Palace with was roller skating as well. But I don't know. They're all these are Crystal, generic names. Crystal, so. Yeah, Crystal Palace that I remember was a. It was just, just a arcade, but it also had that two level, figure eight electric racetrack, electric car racetrack oh, in the center. That sounds amazing, and I don't remember that. Unfortunately, you had to be a licensed driver to run it, so I got the chance. Gotcha. Became Chuck. It became a Chuck E. Cheese before I got my license. Gotcha. So, did you ever? Did you play Dragon's Lair back in the day? Uh, when I had money, because it, it was a. It was, some places it was fifty cents. A lot of places it was a dollar to play. So you didn't uh, didn't get to get too far off because there were too to blow that five dollars on. Uh, did you ever beat it? In the in the the original days, no, I did. Uh, I I knew I knew people, in but it's not set up. It's it was set up easy. I think I think the one on easy. That's that's more what I remember. I was. Yeah, I. At least on the settings, like where you can't, um, you can't. Con- you, is there is there a version where you can continue? Like like on the the settings at free play, I can't imagine being it in the wild. The wild that that sounds like the hardest thing possible. Uh, let's see, they do have it. 
you supposedly can set it up to continue. I uh, like I said, I've never seen it, but like I said I never, I never be. Uh, I mean, I could probably sheer luck to the get through the second cycle, but I never, I never beat it. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're when you're a kid in seventh eighth grade, right in the middle of madness, there's like I said, there was too many other flashing lights and noises to pay attention to. So, mm-hmm. like I said, there was uh, that. That's the thing when I tell everybody when I look at all the games at free play, it's like. Every one of these were here when I was a kid, <laughs> so it's yeah can't can't be a favorite to just one of. Yeah, I, 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 you're you're known for your your Dragon Slayer. I think you're known for Dragon Slayer a world record, but b like it's right there up front. So and it's impossible. So like if somebody wants to see Dragon Slayer beaten, they pretty much have to go to you or. Uh, I, Michael can do it now. Michael Simister. Um, yeah. But that's about it. Um, like that's 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 the impossible dream is basically to see the ending of that and the ending to Ghosts and Goblins. Like you're just not gonna see it, um, unless uh, unless you happen to be there, which you are frequently. So when that when the, the well, topic comes up, you know, there's Chris. Well, that link helps. Mm-hmm. Dragon's Lair Project. So. Tell us about the the grind, I guess, because did you, when it came in, because it wasn't, I don't believe it was a launch day title, right? No, the last, first time I saw it was the first anniversary. Yeah, so, so put it on the floor, took it out, and then probably a month or two. After that. Yeah, and I don't know what problem led them to taking it out, um, but uh, it's uh, pretty much not going to move. I'm like, happy. To... Yeah, you're st- you're still breaking up. So if you see me, if if I interrupt you or start like repeating what you're saying, that's that's why I'm just sort of synopsizing, trying to to make up for it. But um, the you started. Let's see. So yeah, I don't think it's gonna move at all because um, it's running a real laser disc in there, which is certifiably insane, and uh, that thing will break uh-huh. at some point. Uh, I think it might move at the point that it breaks, which would be inevitable. But we're years in, so it like they've done everything they can to to keep it um, safe and sound and in public and uh, right where Chris can play it. But like uh, at that point, they'll they'll probably put a Dexter in it, and then it could potentially move. But classic arcade machines. Plus, I don't know. It's at this point, it's 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 really iconic. It's the first game you see when you come into free play Richardson is Dragon's Lair and why not? It's beautiful. Yeah, I remember for a while, oh, when Stranger Things came out, people were using it more as a photo op than a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's had one a, time. I want to say it's had a couple of run throughs like that. Um, it just it's Oh, it's, I just remember one time seeing about six, seven people showed up. And they all just posed in front of it, took a picture, and then they just went to the, something else. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, okay, whatever. Well, that's the playing experience of Dragon's Lair is you're like, okay, I want to try this game. And you try it, and then you're dead before you even realize the game started. Well, you go play another game. That's, yeah, that's, like I said, that's that's the, the unfortunate uh Problem with it being uh, maxed out is yeah, it's yeah, if you're not on top of it, and no, it's it's gonna beat you pretty quick. So yeah, and plus it awkwardly like doesn't it skip a scene that was intended to be on there, like a, an introductory scene? Uh, honestly, I don't think it was ever really there. Mm-hmm. Talking about the like the drawbridge. Yes. Yeah, you never actually like enter the castle, so you just sort of. I mean, I honestly don't know. I mean, my video game lore, uh, but I don't think it was actually. Um, you go on link I sent. They, I think they talk about that, and I think actually come out ROM set or whatever to the. It's more like a fan's ROM set of how they think the game should truly be out. I can't. 
I think they talk a lot about it on that website. Do you own any so, of the, the home versions of Dragon's Lair? Uh, yes, I do. I think I I have all three. I have one, two, and Space Ace. Nice. Uh, and I'm still waiting for Space Ace because I never got to play Space Ace. What uh, what do you have them on? Uh, it's DVD, and I use uh, Daft. Gotcha. What about the uh, the Daft. Blu-ray release? Have you tried that out? Uh, no. I guess one. I don't have a Blu-ray. <laughs> ah, but... right. a PlayStation Three or Four, and maybe I don't know about the new Xbox One. Maybe. Um. The PlayStation is my is my Blu-ray player. I've never actually owned a Blu-ray uh, player straight up. But if you have one, then, then you have a Blu-ray player. Uh, I can recommend the the Dragon's Lair Blu-ray. It's not the game. I mean, it's it's kind of built like the game, but you know, it's it's meant for you to enjoy the scenes of the game as opposed to actually uh, play the game. So it's kind of a quasi experience playing the game. But you can you can continue and you can grind your way through and blah blah blah. But uh, cool thing about the Blu-ray release is they remastered it from the original film in wow. high definition, so you can see the whole thing, like the same scenes and everything, with the high definition art on it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cause sounds like a reason to get a, D a Blu-ray player. It's like it's not it's not the same as playing it and beating it in arcade. It's not as cool as, frankly, it's not as cool as watching you over your shoulder. But um, because there's something like so hard about that, that 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 seeing the performance is part of it for me well honestly i haven't been they had the they had the ones at full worth used to be at arlington mm -hmm. and the one when it was at arlington i think it still had a disc player correct uh, it was it was it was set to easy uh-huh so that was like i said that one you know, it, it it wouldn't be near as hard as the one at Richardson, mm -hmm. uh, but I and I think it's still set the same way. It's just running a Dexter. That it's a Dexter in no way affects the actual uh, affects the. It's just it's just a another media right. way to. So yeah, yeah Dexter shouldn't a, have I shouldn't Dexter's have any drive, problem. Right? What's that? I think Dexter is hard drive, right? I have no idea. Uh, it's probably whatever you need to do. I, whatever would it is be, is more would, stable than LaserDisc, which is prone to failure, to say the least. Well, yeah. I'm, anything mechanical break. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but it, so I haven't, like I said, I haven't played it Earth, but if it's anything like Arlington, should be, you know, anybody should be able to figure that one out mm -hmm. and then they need to go come over and try it at Richardson dream shattered. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of dream shattered, like t <laughs> t tell me about like your, your like experience getting to where you could beat it at Richardson. Sad. Uh, tell me about your experience getting to where you could beat it at Richardson. Cause it wasn't, it wasn't like you walked in the door, started crushing dragon's lair. Oh no. Like I said, that's that website is where I learned most of what I know. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly, I learned, you know, when Orlando and Richard Allen told me, "No, the machine's not broke. You just don't know how to pull." Uh, you know, it, I finally figured out why, and yeah, it was just the greatest ROM that's hurt. Uh, but uh, there is actually a there's actually a section on there on that website that discusses the uh, discusses the scene sequencing. Mm -hmm. I mean that that's that was the biggest part first part uh, just because it was so many uh, and then this one being set up the way it is is it just come on took more time just trying to commit that to memory i'm just gonna cue this up so this is uh this is part of our series that we did featuring you uh called it the trials of paga i remember you were getting discouraged um with your talks with orlando 
um, before he went off to uh, to Arlington, and uh, I knew you could beat it. Like I knew, I knew it would be a thing eventually. Um, so I I committed to like coming up there and filming you once a week just to see you try and fail because I knew you would eventually get it. Like as long as you stayed motivated and you know you're plenty talented. Obviously, you had multiple records at the time. So we would film it, and uh, you'd try and fail, and try and fail, and try and fail, and get a little bit further and further. And you you tell you taught taught me about the sequencing. You taught me about the random elements of scoring. And then uh, you know, then this day happened. This is actually this is not the first time you beat it at free play. Unfortunately, I wasn't there for that. You did it uh, maybe two days before, and I know we have oh, pictures. That, yeah. yeah, we. Have yeah, pictures. that was. That was just totally random. I wasn't expecting to beat it. It just out and happened. Is this the second time you beat it? Because this is the one where you finally beat it. Uh, honestly, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Well, I remember. I, what I remember about it was um, when you beat it the first time, uh, the bartender and I can't remember his name. He no longer works for free play. Oh, Chris Thomas. Yes, Chris jumped over the bar to take a picture of Daphne at the uh, with the heart in the end. Um, I know I was. Yeah, he I was, was. He was in the middle. He was in the middle of attending bar and then uh, charging admission to some other people. Mm -hmm. But I hit the lair, and yeah, basically I was just everything outside of screaming the arcade. Luckily, I already knew the the ending scene. Mm -hmm. I just, like I said, looking out and met our. Yeah. And honestly, I wasn't, I wasn't sure I was going to make it that time, and it just happened. Yeah, I you uh, you were always well. You were struggling with a few things before you got to the dragon's lair. I remember the rope scene was always uh, your main villain. Um, uh that it still is. I bet. I mean, it's you might as well talk about like layers of impossibility for me. So, I was always impressed. But I don't. I I I knew you could do it. Um, I was really really like I can't thank you enough for doing it in the way that you did too. Because I felt like trying and failing and doing it publicly like that's something I I. It's it's part of coming who I am. adversity. Yeah, this, this is part of the experience. You can't get good at a fighting game without trying and failing. You can't get good at a pinball machine without trying and failing. Nobody walks in and wins everything for free uh, like you like you do it in an action movie, I guess. Um, I mean, whatever the backstory is behind that scene in Stranger Things where they interrupt uh, that kid at, at the Dragon's Lair, like that's that's there's got to be a like a killing involved <laughs> in the aftermath of interrupting that game because that's so stinking hard and represents so much work and so much trial and error that that's literally his first time at the Dragon's Lair and uh, and they get interrupted. Uh, oh my goodness, I'm going on a killing spree. Um, yeah, I remember I accidentally snapped <laughs> one time I was playing. <laughs> uh, I just He come up to get something or whatever tapped me on the shoulder and broke my concentration and I died. I was like, what's up? <laughs> kind of yeah. felt bad, but then I, you were actually with me. I went and beat it, came out and watched. Mm -hmm. But yeah, your, your uh, willingness just, to, to like try and fail publicly and then, you know, ultimately succeed and then like shocking, like get the highest score ever. Um, that was pure, just, Talk about Ren, because honestly, I didn't think that was until I went and looked at Twin Galaxies myself. Crap, yeah. was heard. Yeah. <laughs> and that is, that is luckily, the nature of that record, right? You you have made many, 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 many perfect games. It's just RNG on how many points you score. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's just like one. Long drawn out slot machine, mm -hmm. so to speak. Just hit play and, and get shit. Yeah. No, like I said there's no way to press it. It's 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 not like pack. 
Right. The only time, the only way you can press the score is uh, riding the elevator down to the last sequence, which you always do, or you frequently do, and then uh, getting to the, the dragon's time. lair. Yeah, went at the dragon's yeah, lair, make it all the way to the last move. section, fail on purpose, and then start over again. And then do so that. That's all you. Twice. Yeah. Uh, it uh. Was the world uh, record a perfect run? Uh, it was a one man run. Uh huh. Oh, so it was so, one man. So you didn't point press it. Well, you you were there. Was I? For yeah, it was a Tuesday. That I remember. It was a Tuesday night fight. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you happened to walk by and right. It. So you you were there. I remember that much. But uh, no, it was a one man run from the beginning to the dragon's lair. Mm -hmm. I said it's. I wasn't expecting a high score at all. And that popped out, and Chris Thomas actually said that's a world record because I think, I think he said he knew somebody at Galloping Ghost, mm -hmm. Chicago, and I think he had talked to them about it, and he he'd said they never heard anybody get a score that high in the settings. I I couldn't tell you. I mean, obviously everybody else tell you that the, the score isn't nothing because you can glitch the game into like a bazillion points. Mm -hmm. What but I, I'm not looking for that. I just want one clean. I want the high score on one. I want to continue. I want to make a marathon. Yeah, marathon. This record is much more impressive to me than than marathon records. Like this represents a perfect run through the game, um, maximizing all your points in the limited time you have. Now, uh, the RNG nature of it kind of. It is it stinks because you know you've made a perfect game many many times. It's not like you uh, oh yeah you did anything special that day to deserve that. Like you said, slot machine esque. But um, I'm still happy you got it. Uh, I'm happy because now I still play it, but it you know I can kind of move on to other stuff mm -hmm. at this point. What's your current obsession? Uh, lately it was cross. Yeah, I, I, I've made it to the trophy room in Crossbow. Not trick is you have to get to the treasure in the center of the room, and when that happens, I think there's this uh, suit of armor or something sitting in a room, and he's holding a staff or something that lights up, and you have to shoot that, and it opens a trap door and drops your your characters down into the final pit to the final scene where it's this big head and its eyes light up and shoot lightning bolts at you and you have to take that out. Uh, I can make it to the trophy room, but I have not gotten past that. Uh, obviously, there's some games I wish back, back in the Sinistar. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that one's still working. I don't, or... I don't know what location has Sinistar right now. I... I... At this point, there's four locations with hundreds of games, and they're rotating rather frequently. So, and all the other stuff happening in the world at the same time. It, it's I I cannot keep it straight. I've seen. I think Jubeat's back in Free Play Fort Worth, and it was briefly in Richardson, and like like everything has been everywhere. It feels like, except for yeah. Dragon Slayer, of course. Oh, that. Being that's an original disc, it's it's a risk just to move that thing to right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean Pong is in Fort Worth. Pong is not with the Pong World Champion in Richardson. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, I know. We actually talked to Jonathan yesterday or sorry, last week. It was his week, so Um, tell me about uh Tuesday night fights. You 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 don't mind playing a fighting game with us occasionally. Eh, it passes the time. I'm I I, I, I used to where came out. Sorry, you're, you're breaking up I was, bad again. Sorry. It's okay. I, I, lore, I right? used to play Warrior when it came out, but was, that was oh shortly before I moved to Dallas. Mm -hmm. And Main reason for moving to Dallas was one better work, two find bands to play. 
That that was my well, that was my focus then. Uh, nobody wanted to do a band in Shreveport. To sit in their garage, I'm trying to, make I'm noise trying to think of beer. any band from Shreveport. Is it better than Ezra? That's about it. Were they Shreveport? I think so. I don't remember. Um, I can look it up. I don't remember. I don't remember if it was that or Baton Rouge or New Orleans. Probably New Orleans. But but there uh, aren't many. Well, and like the the um the thing with Shreveport is there's so little there that uh even well if you that pass was another through, oh Kenny Wayne Shepherd probably should should be mentioned yeah yeah I had a couple of run-ins care for him <laughs> but, <laughs> no, probably not so much him his dad uh who's a radio DJ out there right uh no he got fired oh uh, what fired he he got well because he turned his morning show to the Kenny Wayne Shepherd variety show. Because uh-huh. he wouldn't play what he was supposed to, he played nothing but his son. Gotcha. And yeah, they didn't. They didn't like that. Mm-hmm. You know, took took appropriate action. So, but yeah, about about that time was when uh, all the gambling boats, and all the so it's like, you know, what little nightlife was the, in Treeport just totally disappeared after that. That in arcades were starting to get, you know, kind of boring at the time. I was kind of getting burnt out, so I just kind of done. Hey, look at you. Hey, ugh. God, <laughs> cut that hair. <laughs> yeah, you hippie. Let's chase in the background. Goodness gracious. Oh wow, that's a. Well, this is this is literally like the first time you've done it on camera, so we had uh. We got to record the whole thing, and I swung the camera around. Man. Yeah, and then I went and did it. Then I went and did it over at, uh, oh, number two over at uh, Arlington. Yeah. If that hits the floor, it. I will get that score back. I believe you. I believe you. Well, that score is weird because it, it, it depends on how many times you continue as opposed to vice versa. Like, the worse you do, the better, right? Uh, I don't know. I it kind of punishes you for for a perfect game, right? So, and it didn't stay around. Like I said, it was kind of broken to begin with. So I didn't get to, I didn't get to go over there and test my theory on some of the stuff. If there's, uh, I don't know if you would get more points because in Dragons are two. You had to collect prizes. You know, there'd be like a little bow and arrow, or there'd be a little spear, or be a little chalice. Certain areas of the game that you had to collect, and you had to collect them on each level in order to progress to the final scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was wanting to try is to see if I could intentionally forget some of them and repeat it. Mm-hmm. And I did not get to see if you would increase your score. Mm-hmm. If you went through a second time. That I don't know. Like. About that time, I thought about that. The uh, like I said, the game was was kind of broken, so they went ahead and pulled right. it out. Yeah, once Never again, got to test the that finicky theory. laser disc. Uh, Palmer wants to know if you have played a space ace in a cabinet. I think you already answered that. No, right? Well, I did, but like I said, that was back in eighth grade. That was it, just for fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, like I said, I rarely got to go to the Bozier Arcade, and it never really stayed in there. Like I said, it was. It wasn't like Dragon's Lair, where Dragon's Lair, once you died, it would go to a totally different scene. Whereas Space Ace was like Dragon's Lair 2. When you die, pretty much take up right where you left off. And that was a little discouraging to a lot of. Uh, no, I never played Thayer's Quest. I. There's a lot of the only other of the laser disc games I can remember trying was a uh, cliffhanger, another just game I saw. Uh, I remember my dad playing one where there was western themed. That's all I remember. There was a big shoot button, and it would it would be western themed. Not the not the hologram one that that just for fun had, but uh, oh, I remember that. One. Yeah, uh, time, time traveler. Yeah. Did you beat that game? Uh, no. Yeah. Honestly, I I watched a, I, what, 
I watched a walkthrough of that. Oh my god, that that's worse than Doctor Mario. <laughs> well, the gameplay Seriously. is 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 very similar to to Dragon. Oh, it's Player. very it's very similar, but it's just the 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 acting is horrible. Yeah, it's horrific. Time Traveler, if you wanna you wanna look up a playthrough on YouTube. I think that's an hologram a. game. Yeah, I think you're right. But too. uh. Uh, what else was there? The Mach Holocaust three. Fighting Mark... game was even worse, by the way. Mach Mach three was another laser disc game, but it was it just played back terrain footage, and it had an overlaying video image of a fighter jet, and you just it's just a shooting galaxy. Uh, was it? Uh, didn't get to play Firefox. Uh. Another one, and I can't remember what it was. Uh, it's West Flowers Quick Draw. That was a Dave and Buster. That was a laser disc game, and it was basically just a screen platform out that held a six gun, and it literally had to do like an old west quick draw. Is that the one that with was the, a Dave with the with the, Go with ahead. the actual acting with the live live actors? Yeah, yeah, because I, I played that one. Or I saw uh, people play that game. Not not a Dave and Buster's yeah. versus Louisiana, but yeah, I, huh, I never saw it. Dave and Buster's where I first saw. It. They had one at each location, uh, either end of Dallas, mm -hmm. and this one guy would always run to the other location and put high scores up against theirs. So it was this it was this big competition running back and forth. Dave and Buster's the high scores against the. That was a pro fun. It, it did a game didn't last long, but it you know, still fun. All right, so people are asking about the cat. Tell tell us about Jimmy. The neediest cat I have ever owned. I mean, you say that, and yet I have this cat right here, who desperately wants to be petted, but won't stay in my lap. So you watch this this, <laughs> this cat will bounce immediately, but won't go away. No, no. It's got to stay right here where I can't pet it. Oh, no. That's. Oh, no. It just. He follows me all over. It does not matter where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I'll go to make something to eat. We're here on Twitch. He's he's sitting outside. The, I, I don't like, like him in the this room here because then he starts climbing on everything. Mm -hmm. And he, he actually got his paw caught in the uh, in one of my shelves. And almost hurt himself, so I don't like him in here because he starts getting antsy and climbing on there. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for him to knock something down. Well, but, Jimmy is the free play kitty, right? That's what everybody says. I mean, that, that's true, right? Like, yeah, you, you met him. In that's front of free where play. he. That's was. Mm -hmm. Nobody, you know, nobody else was making an effort to really pick him up. Uh, I think everybody was kind of frightened because they habit or anything. So, you know, the cat obviously wants to be with somebody. He just doesn't trust it. Right. But, you know, cats have stomachs, and if you have, uh, you know, as long as you have food, you can a cat will be your biggest friend. Palmer says that Jimmy hates Blomgren. Is that true? I didn't see it. Supposedly he bit him. <laughs> And yeah, I think maybe he just doesn't like, a, like Honda players. I don't know. Have you have you <laughs> introduced him to the Jerry? Might might see. <laughs> but yeah, he was. I remember the days when he was out front, and like I, there's three cats in my house. I can't have a, uh, I can't have another cat. I couldn't have a cat then. Um, so while I I desperately wanted to see Jimmy find a good home or be nice and cute and needy somewhere um it wasn't happening and it was i want to say it was a couple of weeks of him being out front of free play on and off um and well and that was also when it was uh it was yeah it was like 30 degrees out mm -hmm. at that time so yeah it was like right around november so it was like freezing out yeah and there's this people so there's this adorable little kitten in front of free play and you know, I was late to the game. Like I, I, I heard about it before I saw Jimmy, and then, um, you know, he's so adorable. You, you, you don't want to see anything bad happen to the cat. So 
And then everybody was like, well, I'm sure he'll, he'll find a home. I'm sure, I'm sure. And y I hear this. This is like the most like common refrain I hear in all walks of life. Like I hear about how I'm sure the, the show will be just fine uh, if, if Chris, you don't do this or that to it. And that's rarely the case. Someone actually has to do the work or, you know, this problem pops up to this person who is of, 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 relative fame because of the free play arcade community group and and i always hear like well somebody will pop up and and fix it all because of the the notoriety of the group itself and it's like yeah that not so much it takes somebody to actually do it and that's a bigger step so you yeah. actually took it with jimmy like jimmy's in your house now <laughs> i'm so happy about it too i remember when do we were fighting with the decision like should i or shouldn't i and I, i'm so happy you did oh i like i said i had just I wasn't really looking for a cat. I just had at that point it had been three months. Mm -hmm. I think I actually had to say goodbye to my previous cat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was eh, like I said, I was juggling that th those thoughts around for a while. So he was just sitting there, and like I said, nobody. I, like I said, a lot of people, it seemed like they were afraid. I was like, yeah, I, I've, I don't I've think, had cats my... You, you adopted him. I don't think anybody else was going to adopt him. Like, this is, this is, you know, this is what it was meant to be. Um, people, people could say that, like, someone's going to pick him up as much as they want. Uh, technically true, but it was always going to be you. Or or nobody, so um, I'm glad you did. Yeah, uh, he's off the street. Mm -hmm. Just annoying you, and making for cute pictures. <laughs> oh yeah, and emptying my wallet with his fifty dollar every two subscription cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to hear you take good care of him. Lego wants to know if he's fixed. He's trying to get kittens. Uh probably going to yell at me. At the moment, he is not. I'm waiting to go back to the vet and have so checked again for his, for his, uh, for his, is it, he's on the food because he had some uh, urinary tract issues. Mm -hmm. So this is cleaning him up. So hopefully when all, that's all cleaned up. Then I will find get that taken care of. Uh, so, but at the moment, he is not. Mm -hmm. So, Lego, he's so, saying there's a chance. Yeah, the yeah, crystals. <laughs> well, the thing is, he does not drink water. So. <laughs> All right. Palmer's now yeah. discussing the strangest uh, GoFundMe I've ever heard of. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He's going to. Go for Jimmy's gonads, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now I said he's but yeah you know, he's you that's usually happens early he's he's actually years old now I figured he was about six months old or whatever when I rescued him so about Ju June July is his that we figure that's what his birthday is. So he's oh he's he's about two years old, right? Did you say he's about two now? Yeah. Wow. It feels like it's been longer than that, to be honest with you. Although time time's definitely a flat circle with me these days. Well that and with all this quarantine stuff, time just came seems to be creeping by just like yes yes <laughs> yeah it both feels like yesterday that i was the times were normal ish and uh we were busy at free play and it also feels like a thousand years ago uh thank you for coming out and supporting and continuing the support i've seen i've seen you at free play got the got the hair growing out oh my goodness Links galore. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he does look like him. 
kind of kind of looks like kind of looks like ash Um, no, I got this video up, so I'm I'm kind of looking at the comments. The king of Gret Dragon's Lair. I I think you you may not know it, but you were an inspiration to many, just the way you struggled through and 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 prevailed. So I, again, as 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 always, I can't thank you enough. Well, no, I don't. You know, people I, have their goals in life. Yeah. Look at look at Lauren Featherstone. Yeah. Talk, well, yeah. talk about inspiration. Never been to an arcade before, then all of a sudden, boom, she breaks it. Right. But it's also, you know, it's related. Like, you know, your your journey had been completed um, before hers. So, you know, we definitely yeah, your name but mine, many times. Yeah, mine didn't, but mine didn't take 30 hours. True, true. But like, Mine only took 15 minutes. That, uh, that, hey, a normal person can do it. And will struggle and has struggles and and can ultimately prevail. Like that's you're the, you're the first one to to let me document that. And now you know. And I remember um, seeing you know um, the different super turbo players, the the terrible terrible Street Fighter players um, of the time, and uh, and pointing to you and being like, you can get better. And and they have gotten marginally marginally better. Marginally better. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I Mike's about the same, I see but. a lot. I I <laughs> I've seen a lot of them get way mm -hmm. a lot of them way better. I still remember when I freaked Blomgren out Kyle yes. on Super Turbo because I hadn't played it in years, and I don't think he really ever played it at all. Really, I don't know. Just walked out. Oh yeah, boom, 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 and I knocked him out in two rounds. Yeah, but now he's he is definitely a lot harder. Definitely a. But you're also talking to somebody that does. You have your World Warrior Guile, that you bring over to Super Turbo, and you you're, you're functional with them, and you're way more than people anticipate from just the guy at the bar who's standing there. They think you're gonna pick Chun and start mashing buttons with everybody else, and then. Oh, there's uh, there's plenty of button mashing. Yeah. Mainly because I. So but you're can, always surprisingly can, good. And uh, Tuesday I Night have, Fights champion. I can't remember what you won. I know you accidentally won the belt one time. Two of them, actually. Two? Yeah. What, what games uh, do you uh, Mortal Kombat 2. Mm -hmm. uh, was, it, was it Paul Brown? Mm -hmm. Yep. Him. That was a total random thing. Stuck me in. It was my... Oh, I'm just gonna sit here at the bar and then I'm going to play TNF <laughs> moment. Yes. And then the other one was with John Cow on what the heck was it? One y'all uh, Some was it? random Sam SK game I would gamble. Samurai something. Mm -hmm. I don't remember uh, the name. Samurai of it. Showdown something or other. That may have been. Yeah. But I'm not sure what number because we've done all of them at this point, including Samurai. That one was special. Uh, it was probably the earliest version. I I don't remember. I I really didn't know what I was doing, but somehow lucked out and got five my first sit. <laughs> and everybody's like, just <laughs> I can't. <laughs> so just total luck, which is. That's the name of the game in TNF. <laughs> well, when you're getting partnered. Eh, I mean, oh, I, like I said, I wasn't good at the game. Cal was, well, that's the was a lot better than I was. Yeah, that's the, de you know? the design of Tuesday Night Fights. Like, I want to put together players who have little or no experience with the veteran players. And, like, you know, you unless this is World Warrior... You don't have a ton of fighting game experience, so so you're usually the the first player. In fact, you always will be, will be unless you just get good at one of these games. Um, and I'm perfectly happy with that. I'm perfectly happy having you be the the player that you are, kicking ass on Crossbow and Sinistar, and just kind of amusing us over at the fighting games because you make, you know, for players like Lauren Monreal. I don't know if you know Lauren. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so Lauren and Naomi. And um, 
Jasmine and like all the players that are just starting that are that would be crushed, you know, if you just put them up against Mike or whatever. Um, they get, they get a chance to like push the buttons back and forth and maybe beat you and maybe not beat you because you play because you agree to slum it up with us and who cares like that attitude is so very helpful to the group as a whole and like we have seen players progress from that um, because they didn't get run away at the first instance of playing the game which is what I'm trying well, to avoid. I I like it one because like I said it. Well, it's like when when Tina first started, it was pretty much everybody, everybody they yeah, didn't really was. do any of the matching. And honestly, that you know, if you're trying to build a crowd, that that can that can actually hurt. Right. Uh, but when you, you you're doing all the matching, it 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 makes it definitely makes an experience for everybody. Yeah. To say, no, because like. Because a lot of times I'll get knocked out in the first round, and I think, oh, okay, I'm done. And then, you know, an hour, half later, it's like, oh, I got to. <laughs> and it then also, it... it also makes me feel really good at the end of the night when I'm handing uh, a player like you the championship belt and declaring you the champion. And, and by the way, a title that's earned by your team. Eh, I mean, it. I don't feel worthy of it because I don't play it all the time, but you know, it's, it, it, like I said, it, like you said, it, it helped, it, it inspires people to get in, it's, you know, it, it'll happen to them just like it did me. So, well, Chris, I'm beneficial I'm, for everybody. It d- absolutely is. Um, Chris, I'm proud to have you as the Tuesday night fights champion multiple times as our dragon's lair world champion as a Sinistar player whom I will never catch. Um, and as a free play Hall of Famer, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Please pet Jimmy for us too, or yell at him. But you can do both. <laughs> you can do both. All right, thanks. That's uh, that's all the time we have. We uh, we have the pinballers coming up in just a minute. So if the pinballers are here, let me have them come to the special guests on stream. I'll move things around. Let's see. Whitlock's here. Yes, Austin's here as well. Michael's in the the general. I can actually drag him up myself. There he is. Looking for um, Shannon and Brennan. Also, I need to switch up the titles and do a little producing on the fly. Sorry don't have a producer sitting behind my shoulder. This has been a, a throwback day. Normally, there we go. These days, I haven't been streaming 10 hours a day, although I might actually put in 10 hours today. Oh, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. It's uh, it's it's been a, it's been fun to to talk to some of the old voices. Bully Mania from New Jersey is flying in this weekend to uh, to join us for for Stun Day and to actually get to go to free play for once. It's one of those things you didn't know it was. Some people didn't know how special it was until it got taken away, and now that we have a chance to go, they're chomping at the bit to actually get to see it. Mm-hmm. Someone's got a 